Okay, this is part three. In this part, I'm going to go over creating the creating the area, creating the um, armor for my character, so I'm not all natural. I'm going to go over setting up our initial spawn point for our system and actually get the daytime working. Um, the reason it's not working, it wasn't working before for the initial time is actually because we don't have a default map set and so it can't really load the information for the map if it doesn't have an initial map to um, get the to load the information for. This scene looks different than what we had before. Pretty much I just went through and created a terrain real quick using view save that out into world machine to get some um, flow effects and then I put it into my um, auto terrain texture close this out unnecessary memory okay so first thing um, first thing first I need to set up a persistent map so we go over here, enable world composition. Actually, I need to make another map first. This map will hold the main area. And then I have another area that's going to hold the mountains. And then let's come in here, enable world composition. And it was supposed to grab all my levels and put them together. But I might have done that wrong. Let's see. I'm going to delete this. I'm going to delete this. Save all. Re-enable world composition. Let's see. Let's see if I can split these up. I should be able to come in here, take my cliffs, Remove storm selection from the selection. I should be able to make a new map from this current selection. Create new level. Give it a name. This is going to be mountains. Now if I load on mountains, I should be able to send all to this current level. Let's see, right click. Ah, select deselected everything. There we go. Right click this. Stop that. Right click. Move to the cur current selected level. So now if I hide this, all this is in this level stream. Go back real quick. I'm actually going to keep the, the RPG sky in a base persistent level. That way, no matter where we go and whatever level we load, we still have access to our sky and it's not going to be unloaded and things like that or have a possibility of having overlapping skies. So everything can just stay in its nice little bubble. Let's name this for the main island. 
and in the main island double click this I'm gonna move this terrain over let's see level move selection to current level yes hopefully this doesn't crash So that should be done. That's my main island. That's my mountains. And then we have everything else in the persistent level. All right, that looks good. Uh, this landscape gizmo should probably be in the main level, main island level. Move to current selection. <clears throat> All right, verify this. All right, so now we should be good. So now we have a, if you look in our content browser, everything for the composition is within the same folder, so we can keep everything together neatly. The test error will be the name of our region for when we make our map in the database. The main island and mountains will be the actual name of our um persistent level, uh, our level stream information when we insert it into the database. So if we go over to, let me close this. So if we go over to the database manager, <coughs> go to file load, load our database, come down here to maps, I'm gonna create a new map. Our area name will be the um, persistent level. So that would be main island. We don't have to worry about mountains because it's just gonna be something that's usually always loaded. Since it covers the majority of the island, it's just going to stream in when we stream in everything else based on the proximity. We're gonna have the location name, which is the name of the actual waypoint that we're gonna start at. We're gonna call this start location. I'm gonna copy this. Then we need a region. The region is actually the the main persistent level name. So this will be the main level that it loads when it loads the actual system. And then everything else for the persistent level will actually load depending on where the starting location is. And we're gonna call this test area. And we're gonna add a region to the database by clicking here. And now we just go down and click our region. Um, we don't need a link back information. That's just if you want to see where we came from. If we zone into a certain location, if you want to have some kind of link back to tell you where you came from or what brings you to this location, you can have that here. And description isn't really used, but I'll just put something in here for right now. <clears throat> okay, so once that's saved, We can set our starting map and init data to main island. We can give myself more money. We can start a, we can give a starting time, which I'm gonna set for 8 a.m. And that should be all, we'll click save. So now if I go here, close that out, we're going to set up camp Probably over here where we have some flat land. We're just gonna start it here. So like at the, maybe at the start of a town or something like that. If we go down to our smart props, if I can learn how to read. There we go, props. 
And here we have a waypoint. Just drop that off. If you notice, it has a arrow and a radial uh, spear to be able to tell which way you're going to be facing. So let's face it into the town. And usually I lift it up and make sure it drops down to the ground to make sure it can actually do a ground check because since we're using level stream, sometimes even if you force the level stream from what I'm getting at least in 4.9, when you stream the level in, it doesn't always give you the level right then and there even though you have block enabled and things like that. So what this will do, it will do a trace check down to make sure that the ground is actually there before releasing your character from its grasp when you teleport to it to make sure that you and your party members do not just fall through the screen because of a delayed reaction before streaming in the level. So now we gotta go to the name. And we wanna paste in the actual name for the location, which is start location. So now when we save, we hit play. We start our location. The reason that the time and things aren't loaded yet is we technically have no information for actually starting the game properly, so we don't have a title menu and things like that. I'm going to go over that after this so that we at least have something to go to instead of just, you know, just starting with a title screen, which isn't that much of anything. So now we have our starting location. We can load to it um, based on the database parameters. Now, let's go and actually give our person some clothing. So inside our actor lists, we actually have for these actors a few sets of clothing articles, which are boots, bottoms, tops, and the actual actor. This information can be added using the um, using the the blueprint actor data, um, the armor data, which pretty much gives a definition of our of our armor. And you'll see in a few minutes when we actually start adding it in, you can have a a armor definition that also has linked to it. It has a definition for what race and what um, what race and what the actual mesh will be for that race. So if you have different types of character, body shapes and things like that for a given item, you can still specify this given item set for a certain item and then be able to equip that across different classes with different body forms without having to make duplicate, duplicate, duplicate armor data to be able to address that situation with many different types of body types. And depending on if you have a skeletal mesh, the skeletal meshes will automatically go to a given body part that's on the actual actor. And if you have just a single mesh, you can also give a mesh and a mount point so it can mount that actual mesh to a slot point that you may have on the skeletal. But I'm going to delete those since we don't have this here. My races don't match here to what we put in the database, mainly because the translation for those races and things like that, when you bring into when you bring it into the actual engine, is completely listed in a is listed in a completely different place, um, which is in the actual code. So that way you can kind of have some generic standards that's in the database, but if you want to just rescan it or rename it for any given reason to be used in the engine, you can change the source code to be able to bring those races in with the same ID types, but just a different name translation. Um, I have about five minutes left, so let's go over here to the database and quickly 
make some armor for my main character. So go in, load the database. We are going to add a new weapon. Give it a name, give it a class associated to. The weapon link, which is, if we go down to weapons, we're gonna use the fist buster, which as before, we have the mesh information as well as what the mount points for sheathing and unsheathing your weapon are. So we can just go in here, copy this reference. And again, all we need is the class name because it's gonna be looked up from the exported class information when we actually publish our game. Oh, actually that's the icon. Mesh link is for this. The icon is if you wanted to have a certain icon in the um, equipment field or in the store and things like that, it uses the icon link. We're just gonna leave that blank for right now. Put in some kind of description. We're going to put it on the category of fist. We're gonna give it a hit distance of a thousand, which is actually currently used for um, the default weapons. And I'm just gonna leave the rest of these blank because I don't think I use any of these. I can put a cost in here and a sale price. It doesn't really matter. Give some arbitrary numbers for all of this. And if I wanted to, I can add some resources to be able to craft this item here, but we're just gonna leave it as default. Going down, I have about three minutes left in this. Let's make the armor. Gonna make the body piece. The dragon vest. Underscore C. Whatever description, whatever cost, sale. Make sure that the level is one since we're starting off with this armor. Put some introductory values. Save that out. I'm gonna make the legs. Now note, when I hit new this time, I leave the previous information in so it can save me some time for creating new items. So that way, if I'm making a list of things that are pretty generic and, this, and similar costs and similar stats, I can actually go in and edit an armor to be able to populate these fields and then just cancel out and then go to new armor and keep that information from a certain item that I'm cloning or something like that. It's to help um, speed up the prices of everything pretty much. I'm supposed to say leggings. All right, let's see. Save that. I do need to change the armor type. This is for the legs. And make sure that the body is set for the body. All right, and save that. All right, that's for legs. Feet, shoes, something. And then the boots, underscore C. And I'm pretty much out of time for this. I'm going to save this and continue the process of bringing this actually into the system and into the character in the next video.